I started my quest with this, a cardboard shoe sole that could barely produce enough electricity to power a tiny LED. But by the end of quest, I managed to achieve this. I created a stair that's able to produce an average of five volts with every step you take. 87. 87%. 87 out of 100 of the 7.7 .7 billion people living on Earth have access to a reliable source of electricity. And that is a lot of people. It has become such a commodity that many of us, me included, find it impossible to live life without electricity. This statistic was taken from Our World in Data, which is a website that is run by the University of Oxford, and they predict that this number is only going to grow. More people in the world will have access to electricity and will have the opportunities and privileges many of us take for granted every day. But with this reality, there is still a threat. And at Green School, we are all familiar with this issue. Fossil fuels. We have used quantities so large that if a new society were to start with nothing and try to replace us in the world we live in today, they would never be able to reach the Industrial Revolution. Think about that for a second. Fossil fuels have been linked to so many of today's issues, and at the rate we are consuming, it will only get worse. The more coal we burn, the more oil we mine, the more gas we use, the higher the sea levels will rise and the more homes of both humans and animals will be destroyed. And with a problem of this size and magnitude, you can't help but feel small compared to it. You're only really one person. What are you going to do about a global worldwide issue? And that was the question I was asking myself. I wanted to use the time that was provided throughout Quest to really dig deeper and understand the issue, while also potentially creating my own small local solution would, which could be implemented and replicated, which is why I created a stair that's able to generate electricity. And this idea began from a daydream. I was on the car ride home from school and my parents and I were discussing potential Quest ideas though I tried to distract myself and I looked out the window and enjoyed the beautiful view, the mountain atop the endless rice paddies. But then the moment was ruined by a speed bump. The car bounced up and down and continued rushing down the road. But instead of ruining that moment, that speed bump filled me with inspiration. It reminded me of a video I watched in fifth grade about how a man was able to generate electricity with a speed bump. And that idea fascinated me, and I told my parents that I would want to tackle this for my quest project. And to my surprise, they loved it, and they were supportive of the idea. So here, I began doing a bit more research, digging deeper into making my own design. And my very first design was very mechanical, and it relied on a motor and a spring so that when the car ran over the speed bump, a motor would be turned, generating electricity. Though I re later realized just how inefficient the system was and I needed to come up with a better system that could generate more electricity. Fortunately, this was when I met Ibudita and Paktoni, and without them, my quest would have never existed. Ibudita told me about piezoelectricity, which is how this stair is able to generate electricity. The piezoelectric effect is when certain materials, when cut in a special way, then pressed would then be able to generate electricity. These materials include quartz crystals, ceramics, salt, sugar, bone, and a variety of artificial materials. The reverse works as well. The reverse piezoelectric effect is when a voltage is applied to the material, it would then deform, creating noise. So with this newfound information, I was excited and I did more digging deeper into it, and I wanted to try it out myself. So I bought a few piezo elements to test with Ibudita. 
I was full of hope and optimism for the experiment, and I couldn't wait to see the piezoelectric effect in action. But when I first pressed down on that piezo element, nothing really happened. The light we connected to the piezo element didn't glow, and the voltage we received was very low as well. And now I began to become very concerned because I had spent so much time looking into this method and buying materials, I couldn't afford to look for another method. But luckily, Paktoni showed me a design online that I could replicate, and I did my best to do so, and the cardboard shoe sole worked. We got a flash from the LED, and the hope and optimism for my project flashed right back into me as well. The reason this cardboard shoe sole was able to generate electricity was because of this. This is a rectifier bridge, and what this does is it stabilizes the current, making it better for an output, which is why the light was able to glow. And from that, we gathered that this cardboard shoe sole was able to produce a maximum of 2 volts of electricity, an, aver an average of 1.4 volts. And now, filled with excitement, I began to work on a stair prototype. I realized just how long it would take to make a speed bump. It would have to withstand the elements and would have to be strong enough to um, go against the weight of a car. And that would take a very long time and a lot of effort. So instead, I created a stair prototype. And that's what it looked like. It was, um, there were a lot of issues and flaws with the design, but that later dictated the final design to make it as aesthetically pleasing and as efficient as possible. Now I began to work consistently with Ibudita, coming up with a plan and creating a budget for my materials. I would later pitch this budget to the project hub and they would confirm it, meaning I could begin work on the stair. Working on the stairs was a very tedious process. A lot of cutting, drilling, hammering, soldering. It was repetitive, but I had a lot of fun. And because of this, the iHub would become my home for the next three weeks. I would spend as much time in the iHub as possible, spending time at lunch, at break, staying up at school till 7 p.m. just to get more hours into this project. After lots of effort, hours, I would finally conduct my final test on this stair. I would set foot on it for the first time to see how much electricity would produce. We got a decent voltage, and then I tried to get a visual representation, but I was devastated the LED wouldn't glow and nothing happened. This left me boggled because if eight piezo elements on the cardboard shoe sole could power an LED, then why couldn't 65 on this stair, which was over eight times that amount, not be able to? This was confusing, but this was also the last week of school, which meant the break was to come and the iHub would be closed, so I would have to bring this project home. But then, just like governments worldwide, the coronavirus caught me completely off guard. What I thought would be a break then became a very, very long time. And because I worked so hard on this stair, I wanted to relax and really enjoy this break. But with every second not spent working on this stair, the idea that it was unfinished haunted me. I became very lazy, I procrastinated heavily, and I felt useless. So I looked back to myself and remembered just how much this stair had meant to me and all of the hours I put into it. I couldn't let it go to waste. I had put so much effort into this and I needed to do my very best. I wouldn't let a pandemic be the excuse of my failure. And so I began troubleshooting with Ibudita again, figuring out the issue in the stair and how I could fix it. We found that because I had connected each column of piezo elements in series, then switched it up to parallel to connect it all together, that messed up the voltage. So I had to create 13 more rectifier bridges to stabilize the current. This meant that there was a lot of glue gunning, wire cutting, material buying, experimenting, and soldering. But this time, all of it was at home. What I did different was I tried to enjoy the time I spent working on the stair and savor the moment because if I hadn't rushed initially, I could have avoided a lot of the issues that I encountered now. With more hours put in and more effort put into the stair, I would conduct my final test once again and set foot on the stair again. Nervous, but like you saw before, the stair worked. I was so happy and I was filled with joy. Of course, this is not the most aesthetically pleasing design, neither is it efficient, but 
it worked. And this was my effort and I had succeeded. What this project taught me was to really learn that my mistakes taught a lot because the mistakes that I encountered throughout this project taught me more than any online tutorial or resource ever could. And it made me appreciate just how hard the pioneers of technology worked to create the foundation that we lay on today. They worked without much external resource and without much um, already existing technology and they were able to create all of what we had today. And so with that, I felt grateful that I had so many people supporting my project. I couldn't have imagined tackling this project without the support. Though I am not finished with this stair. I still need to implement the design at school and I also would like to create a data collection system to see how I can move forward with this stair. After I've completed the stair, I plan to tackle the speed bump idea again. Uh, I haven't given up on that and I think it would be great to have a working speed bump at school. On top of that, I hope to create accessibility ramps with the ability to generate electricity um, to make Green School far more accessible. So with the next four years I'll be spending at Green School, I'll be continuing development on this project, meeting new people and creating more designs. So check back with me in the year 2024. I thought I had known everything about fossil fuels prior to the work of my project and I thought I knew about the negative impact it had on our environment and society because of all the facts, figures, statistics, infographics, you become desensitized to the issue, distancing yourself. You've heard enough about this, why do we really need to know even more? I was aware that it was a global issue that needed global attention and action, but was I doing my best? Instead of throwing numbers through the screen, let me instead give you this. To quote author and astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson, he once said that if aliens did visit us, I'd be embarrassed to tell them that we dig up fossil fuels from the ground as a source of energy. In fact, we should all be embarrassed. We are using a source of energy we know is going to run out. It's time for change. We should honor what our ancestors gave us and the foundation that we were able to enjoy and the amazing world that we're able to experience. We should give that to our future generations with a renewable system that won't run out. Though of course, not everything our ancestors did had a positive impact on today, but actions aren't hereditary. We can do better. We can learn from their mistakes and shape the world how we want to see it. Awareness that we all have isn't enough because awareness without understanding is just the same as ignorance. Throughout the hours spent working on this project, I began to understand just how important renewable energies are because renewable energies are our future. Quest wasn't just the product. All of the unforgiving mistakes, the harsh realities, the un the amazing and supportive people, it became a real quest. A hero's journey, you could say. Though, as I stand here with all of you looking at me through your screen, I have a confession to make. I am not the hero of this journey. Though, there isn't one hero. It's a group of remarkable people fighting the battles one hero never could. All of you are the heroes. What I realized was this wasn't, this wasn't my quest project. In fact, it was our quest project, especially for me, because as a local scholarship student, I owe all of this to you. But to shorten the list of credits down, I'd like to thank Pak David, the mentor and literacy teacher that I couldn't have imagined doing my quest without. To Ibudita, for always being there to support me and giving me feedback whenever I needed it throughout this unprecedented time, you could say. To the iHub team for turning my idea into a reality. To the development and local scholarship, to the development team and local scholarship program for always working hard and fighting for kids like me to be able to go to school in a bamboo cathedral. To the teachers, to the friends, and to my family. I hope as I stand here that I've made them proud and once again, to the community. How lucky we are to be the 
the 87 out of 100 of the 7.7 .7 billion people living on Earth with access to electricity. But not only that, how lucky we are to be the tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of a percentage of people on Earth that get to experience green school. So with that, thank you. And let's do this for the future of energy, one small step at a time. Great.